everybody. Thank you for coming along to our final uh, mini medical school session tonight. And in case you weren't aware, tonight is all about application preparation. So obviously your first few talks have all been about um, the exciting world of medical sciences, and you've heard from lots of different exciting researchers, where tonight we're going to tell you what you need to do to get into medicine um, or dentistry at university as well. Um, this will only focus on medicine and dentistry tonight. So if you aren't interested in applying to medicine and dentistry, you might want to look at some more general information. This is going to go through some of the additional um, tests and um, steps that you need to do if you're interested in applying to these programmes. Yeah, so as Felicity said, we're just going to be going through uh, medicine and dentistry application processes for uh, Newcastle tonight. Um, our medicine application process has changed. We've got a new admissions policy um so hopefully that we'll be able to um sort of enlighten you on on what is included within that so this is what we're going to be covering we're going to be covering dent medicine and dentistry at newcastle we're going to look at the teaching styles um, and the year by year breakdown of the courses we're then going to look at the application process so the ucas timeline for medicine and dentistry is quite different from um other courses there's just a little bit more to it we're then going to look at ucat so this is one of the admissions tests we use for medicine and dentistry um we then touch on personal statements interviews at the and the admissions process which i've mentioned for medicine has um fully changed and then we're going to talk a little bit at the end about partners and Sutton Trust Pathways to Medicine program. So just a, a quick touch on this. So what is medicine at university? I'm sure you all um, are well aware, having spent the um, past few weeks coming to mini medical school. But it is the study of the human body and human disease um, and the diagnosis and treatment of disease and the use of modern medicine. It's an academic and academic or technical degree awarded for studies in various fields related to medicine and surgery. Dentistry at Newcastle University is the study of human dental structure, function, behaviour, clinical dental studies and related sciences. Treatment and prevention of a wide range of diseases of the mouth from tooth decay to oral cancer. Um, developing the skills that you need to require um, to complete oral health care for patients is what you do during your degree. So now we're going to talk about teaching styles. So teaching styles for medicine is really, really important. Um, it's something that always gets asked about in interviews, and there's a few different structures that medical degrees have. So the first one that we're going to talk about here is traditional courses. These are clearly divided um, courses with a preclinical and postclinical year, um, years. So um, in your preclinical years, you have two to three years where you won't be um, learning your clinical skills or interacting with patients. This will just be sort of book learning. You will do some practical work. Um, generally, it's used universities like Oxford and Cambridge that use um, the traditional style. And you'll come out at the end of your two to three years with a Bachelor's of Science um, before you then go on for the um, next three years to sort of learn all of your clinical skills, um, learning on a ward in a hospital setting uh, under the supervision of healthcare professionals. You do get lectures throughout that as well. There are integrated courses, which is what is recommended by um, the General Medical Council. This is what we teach at Newcastle. Within this, you get your scientific knowledge, so all of your theory alongside um, your clinical training and so your practical work, basically. The material at Newcastle is covered by looking at body systems. So, for example, we might be looking at the digestive system. Um, and within the digestive system, within that one system, we would learn about biochemistry, anatomy, physiology, and your clinical skills to go alongside that. You get a range of teaching styles within integrated courses. So there'll be group work, lectures, seminars, and practical work, as well as placements. Um, and this is the um, recommended style um, of teaching, as I've mentioned, and it's what Newcastle use. The other style that we have is problem-based learning. Um, so within problem-based learning, I think um, Sunderland University use problem-based. Um, you sort of get put in groups with students and you get a problem or a case study. And it's up to you to go away and research that case and then compare notes with others and teach your peers. 
Um, you will get lectures at the end to consolidate your existing knowledge, but there is a big focus on self-directed learning. Now, the most important thing with this, I think you've got to be quite confident to be able to um, know that you can go away, learn all of the relevant material and then teach it to your peers. Um, it's a great way to learn because you will um, sort of learn it as you go. If you need to teach something, you need to learn it first. Um, but it's just something to be aware of that it can, some people can find it quite difficult. And having an awareness of your learning style is really important, especially when it comes to interview. You can say, my learnings, I'm very practical. Um, so an integrated course would be best for me because it's sort of the most hands-on. So it's something to be aware of. And it's really something to consider when you're applying to different universities to think about how their course is structured and how that fits you if it does. A bit about medicine at Newcastle University, we use an integrated case-led approach, as I'd mentioned, and we are professionally accredited by the General Medical Council, as all UK medical schools should be. Something that's quite unique to Newcastle is that in year two, you can do a semester in Malaysia, so you can go abroad um, to our lovely campus in Malaysia, as you can see on the picture there. Um, we have another site out in Malaysia that teaches the exact same syllabus, so you won't miss anything um, from your degree in terms of academic study um, and you get a sort of experience a bit of nicer weather because um, it, it sometimes gets a little bit cold in Newcastle. Um, in year four we also have an eight-week elective. Um, for this you can go anywhere in the world doing placements, studying and sort of practicing medicine. Um, friends of mine have gone everywhere from Nepal to South Africa, Australia, um, to the RVI right in Newcastle. It's completely up to you where you do that. There is an opportunity for intercalated study. Now, intercalated study usually involves taking a break between year four and five um, and doing a master's programme. Um, other universities may offer this, but not every university. Um, you can do things like cancer research that can really um, sort of give you a deeper understanding of a certain area of medicine. And if it's something that if you're interested in um, practicing research, um, as Ruth Plummer did, we see so with uh, Ruth, she does um, academic research as well as clinical work. Being able to intercalate can be a real step up for you um, doing that. So these are just things to look out for as well when you're looking for a medical degree. What does that university offer you that can add a little bit of um, extra bonus to your medical degree? Our entry requirements are three A's at A level um, and a valid UCAT score. We will be looking at our entry requirements in depth later with Felicity and our interview style for medicine is multiple mini interviews, which we will also um, touch on in a bit. This is just a quick rundown of how our years are um, how our years are broken down. As you can see, we've got quite a big cohort. This is week one teaching of one of our um of one of our years. So we fill a lecture theater of about 360 people. Um, so there's there's plenty of people on the course. But saying that you do get varied teaching styles, including lectures, big group lecture lectures like you can see here, but you'll also get clinical skills teaching within our sort of mock hospital lab. Um, and then you will get anatomy teaching in our dissection suites. Um, but you're also linked with community-based practitioners um, so this means that from years one and two, you will be going out and shadowing doctors. So your um, introduction to clinical practice or your sort of awareness of it comes really early from years one and two. So if that is something that you're interested in, definitely uh, Newcastle could be a good course for you. In year three, you then get a 15 week introduction to clinical practice. And this is where you'll start to go out to hospitals. You get attached to government hospitals. Um, and I'm just going to go back on my slide because um, one thing about Newcastle that's really great is we're a regional medical school. So we cover a massive area of land. So you can see this little map here. We cover hospitals right up to the Scottish borders in Northumberland. So right the way up to Berwick, out to the west in Whitehaven and down to the south in Middlesbrough, as well as the inner cities of Gateshead, Sunderland and Newcastle. I think this is a massive benefit to you guys as medical students. Um, it just means that you get to experience a lot of different types of medicine. You'll get the inner city medicine of Newcastle or Gateshead or Sunderland, really busy 
um hospitals with a lot of specialities but you'll also experience rural medicine in areas such as Berwick or Whitehaven um and then sort of different socioeconomic areas too so we've got Middlesbrough which again you can imagine is quite different to a place um like Berwick um, you will do placements in child and adolescent health, community, mental health and women's health. You'll get six weeks each on them. And then you can choose your student selected components. So this is when you can start to think about you re what you really enjoy and where you want to go within medicine and choose which um, specialities you'd like to tag along to. In year four, you get placements in long term conditions and an eight week elective um, either abroad or at home, which we've already spoke about. And then in year five, you do your preparations for foundation training. You do your exams quite early in the year. And then you've got the rest of the year just to um, do further clinical patients and really focus on the transition from medical student to doctor. Teaching styles for dentistry. Um, at Newcastle, you'll get a lot of clinical exposure. By year three, you start to see your own patients and take on your own patient load. We um, use an integrated team learning style um, and you, you gain patient responsibility as you go. Um, and again, you get varied teaching styles. So lectures, seminars and clinics. Dentistry at Newcastle is professionally accredited by the GDC, as all dental schools are. Um, there's a study abroad option again, an elective at the end of year four, um, and then an opportunity for intercalated study too. So that would be the same as medicine. Our typical entry requirements for dentistry are three A's at A level, including biology and chemistry, and we use UCAT for dentistry too. Um, our interviews are panel style interviews. This year it is um this year the interviews are online. And this is just a quick breakdown of your years at dentistry. So varied teaching, including lectures, clinical skills and anatomy teaching then you shadow senior students in the dental hospital so once you're in your sort of years five and six uh, the new students will come and shadow you working and then you also cover basic biomedical sciences for um as a basis for clinical work so you build a scientific knowledge um to build your practical skills on in year three, you start the management of your own patients under close supervision. So we don't just send you out, you will be monitored um, very closely. And then you're placed in the dental hospital 43% of your learning time. So it's a really practical degree. Um, you do courses in pathology and microbiology to gain initial grounding in disease and, pr and processes. Um, separate teaching of clinical disciplines with increasing complexity and integration between skills as the year progresses. And yes, four to five, half of your time will be on patient care and clinical dental practice. Um, and again, you just sort of focus more on transitioning into a dentist from a dental uh, student. You'll then look at advanced techniques such as orthodontics, dental implants and dental implants and intravenous sedation. So this is what the application timeline looks like. So from July to September 2024, so next summer, you'll be looking at UCAT. Um, we're then going to look, I would recommend looking at work experience right now, at whatever age you are. It's never too early to get some work experience behind you, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. August to October, you'll be doing your personal statement. Then comes the UCAS deadline in October. Traditionally, we would have had BMAT here. Um, you might have heard about BMAT, but it is no longer in circulation for from now. Um, we haven't the universities that use BMAT haven't confirmed what they will be switching to. Uh, we imagine it might be UCAT, but that is up to the, those universities to decide. So uh, monitor those universities' admissions policy closely if you are interested in them. We'll then look at um, interviews from December to March time and then A-level results day comes in August and then you'll hopefully all get the um, the grades that you need and come to university. That is the same for medicine and dentistry. Um, the most important thing is the UCAS deadline being early in October and that's just those dates wrote down a bit clearer. The exact dates are TBC but they tend to be around the same times. So now we're going to talk about admissions tests. So as I mentioned, um, for the academic year 2024-25 onwards, 
um, the medical schools that use BMAT will no longer be using this. It's been taken out of circulation. Um, they haven't all updated their entry requirements, but we do expect that most will be switching to UCAT. But that is not for us to say. Um, that is for those, those universities to confirm. Talking about the UCAT, we are a UCAT university. And the UCAT is a computer test normally taken in an external test centre. So if anyone knows someone who's taken their drive and theory test, they're taken in a very similar centre to that. Uh, in Newcastle, the centre is just down on the quayside. Um, and the UCAT test is really quite different to other tests that you might have taken. There's no curriculum information. So there's no information really that you've learned in school. So you can't revise, but you absolutely can. And you absolutely do need to prepare. Um, one of the most difficult things about UCAT is just how they phrase their questions and how they ask their questions. So um, it's, a, it's a real... Um, sort of challenge to get used to that sometimes. The test itself is two hours long and there's five different sections. Each section is individually timed. You don't get to sort of portion your time out um, as you wish. It is set different time frames for each one. Um, the test is used just to um, basically add another step within the medicine and dentistry um, application process. We get a lot of brilliant um, students applying to us. Um, so this helps us look at different mental abilities that UK medical and dental schools deem to be important and add a basically a score on that. Key information is over here, exact dates are TBC, but they always remain the same each year. So you can register for an account from May and then you can book from June. I would recommend booking as soon as you can. And when I say that, I don't mean book on the 20th of June for the 10th of July. I just mean make sure you have your place booked. Um, so you could book it in June for September. That would be absolutely fine. But because it's an external test centre, there are, are only so many places. Not everyone in that test centre will be sitting UCAT at the same time. Um, some people, as I say, will be doing their driving theory tests. Some people might um, be doing sort of the LSATs for law. So it's important that you book quickly to make sure that you can get a spot at your preferred test centre. Um, your school can't help you if you sort of miss the deadline or anything. Um, you just sort of have to be on the ball with this one. There is a testing fee of £70, but there are bursaries available. Um, so just check the website, check the UCAS website, UCAT website, to see if you're eligible for them. Um, and if you usually get extra time in exams, if you have any accessibility requirements, you can get in touch with UCAT and they will um, accommodate with you with that as well. We're going to look at each section individually now. So we have verbal reasoning, which is your first section. This section is 22 minutes long. You get 11 passages of text within this section and four questions per passage of text. This basically retests your ability to think logically about written information. I think it's one of the sections that people feel most comfortable with because it's basically a comprehension test, which you've probably been doing in English at school for a long time. So you read some um, a couple of paragraphs and then you will answer questions based on that. Although it's one that people generally feel comfortable with because of the format, it's actually one that people tend to do the worst on because they don't spend as long um, practicing it because it seems so familiar. Um, so it is well worth spending a bit of time on this. What you need to do is get used to scanning test text quickly and being able to pick out key information. Um, we would recommend always reading the question before the um, section of text, but you would practice the UCAT exam to understand how it works best for you and how um, which strategies you will use to answer the questions. The UCAT website has a bank of hundreds of questions um, and I will be running some um, UCAT preparation sessions online in the new year. Um, so look out for them in your inbox if you are interested in signing up for them. But the UCAT website is fantastic. Loads of practice questions, um, test. There's also some mock tests that you can take. Um, we wouldn't recommend paying for any resources such as like Medify or things like that because all of the information is available for free from UCAT. There used to be an app that you could download for your phone. 
and your school libraries most likely will have you cap books that you can um that you can go and read you don't need to buy anything quantitative reasoning is the next section uh 36 items in 25 minutes you get a calculator for this section it's basically just maths questions um if you're not doing A-level maths, don't worry at all. It's usually based around A-level, um, around GCSE maths. Um, you'll get given a lot of charts, graphs, and tables. It's really common that you're going to be working out things like percentages, tax conversions. Um, and this is just, we just want to see how you work um, sort of with your numerical reasoning. Um, can you do calculations? You do get a calculator within the test, but this is a on-screen calculator. When practicing, we would recommend using a real keyboard, um, like the one I have here, that has a keypad in the um on the right-hand corner. This just means that you'll get quicker at using the shortcut, the shortcuts for the calculator, and every second does really count in this UCAT test. You also get a scrap bit of paper. Um, which is usually a laminated sheet of paper that you can scribble on um, and do any workings out that you need to. Um, it might actually be a tablet now um, that you can use to just do some working out on. But yeah, if, you, if you're not doing A-level level maths, it might be an idea just to refresh your memory on things like percentages and conversions and fractions and um, sort of analyzing graphs. Mm -hmm. The next section is abstract reasoning. Um, this tests your ability, ability to track change and generate it and generate hypotheses and crit critically evaluate evaluate sorry information which is non numerical and non verbal or non written. Um, you'll be given a number of shapes and you must identify patterns and relationships between them. You get 55 items within this section and only 14 minutes. So it's really quick fire. And I think when you see this to start with, it's the most difficult one. It's it's a little bit completely different from the uh, questions that you're used to receiving at school. So it's well worth um it's well worth having a look at some of these and just familiarizing yourself with uh what tends to come up the more practice questions you do you will see that UCAT sort of um repeats the types of patterns that they ask for decision making test your ability to apply logic and re reach a conclusion or decision I always think this is a bit like receiving some riddles and you have to work them out this would be the section that I would use the scrap bit of paper on the most you need to evaluate arguments and analyze statistical information you could be presented with items that may refer to text charts tables graphs or diagrams 29 items in 32 minutes the situational judgment section of the test is the only section of the test which is actually healthcare related. So you're given a set of hypothetical scenarios. You need to put yourself in the shoes of um, the person within that scenario and you need to judge the appropriateness or the importance of a series of statements in response to them. You don't have to have any healthcare knowledge prior to answer these. It's sort of looking at your ethics Um. And, and where your decision making skills are 27 minutes with 21 different scenarios and 69 items in situational judgment this section is um banded rather than added to your overall UCAT score so you can score um band one which is the highest to band four which is the lowest Felicity is going to be talking about how we look at you um situational judgment in a little bit um but that is something to bear in mind it doesn't add to your overall point score um, no one's ever scored 100% on UCAT as well, just to point that out. Um, it's not designed for you to be able to go in, sit it and feel um, really confident that you've done everything. You can flag questions if you're really unsure of the questions, but we would always recommend just guessing and moving on. You can flag it and come back if you've got time, um, but it's not negatively marked, so you don't um, you don't lose marks for getting questions wrong. Personal statements. Personal statements are um, a piece of writing, basically one side of A4, 4,000 characters or 47 lines. You get one personal statement for all five of your choices. Four of those choices um, can be medicine or dentistry. The fifth choice has to be something other than medicine or dentistry. 
stu um, subjects like biomedical sciences will quite often accept a medicine or dentistry personal statement. Um, some universities, such as pharmacy, might get in touch and ask for a separate personal statement. You need to be able to tell a university why they should pick you um, to study with them over other brilliant candidates. Um, we would use personal statements to consider personal um, similar candidates, which Felicity will talk about in a minute. Um, but you really need to show um, that you are suitable for university life within your personal statement. Um, and it could also form the basis of interview questions for traditional and panel style interviews. This is where we would recommend to start. So think about why you want to study um, your subject. This can be personal to you. Don't let it overtake your entire personal statement, but really do think about why you want to study your subject. Um, I would say most personal statements do start, I want to study medicine because, um, so try and avoid that if you can, would be my um, advice. What have you done to understand the career? Have you done work experience? Have you had conversations? Have you been reading around? Have you been listening to podcasts, watching TV shows? Anything that you've done that has made an impact on you and can under made you understand the career more can be included there. What are your key skills and traits and how do they relate to your um, chosen career or degree? And can you think of anything a little different about yourself that makes you stand out? Every single person will have this Um it's just important to try and sit down and think about what that is um, and what you want to do at university apart from studying. Uh, universities love people who are going to contribute to their community and um, offer a little bit more than just sort of book learning. You also need to speak to your teachers and UCAS advisors within your schools. Quite often um, you will have earlier deadlines within schools. Um, you will also need to tell them that you want to apply for medicine and dentistry because they'll need to do your references um, at October rather than January. This would be the structure. So why the course, your skills and achievements, hobbies and interests, work experience, and then conclusion. This is some point as for why the course. So why do your current studies uh, relate to medicine or dentistry or how do they relate to medicine or dentistry? What made you want to study medicine or dentistry? Um, and make sure you mention past experiences briefly. Um, don't make it, you know, too emotive. It's not um not not a novel. You want to focus the majority of your personal statement just on yourself and your skills. Um, make links to any academic skills that you have. How will they help you out at university and further on um within your career? And what do you know about the course? So if you've looked at only integrated courses, you could mention that within your personal statement. What interests you? Why do they interest you? Universities love to say that you've done your homework. Um, thinking about transferable skills, what have you gained and how do they relate to medicine and dentistry? These are just some examples that we've put up, up on the board. Um, each of these have transferable skills. So thinking about playing a musical instrument, you're showing if you're applying to dentistry, you can show manual dexterity through that. If you're um, thinking about sport, if you play a team sport, we can think about how applicable that is going into a career within a healthcare team setting. Um, university summer school, you're preparing yourself for summer school. Everything you've done does have a transferable skill. It just takes a little bit of time to sit down and think about what those transferable skills are. So your hobbies and interests sometimes do overlap with your skills, um, but what are your... Um, what are what makes you interesting and what skills do you have from this? So this is actually taken from um a sports. Basically, if you play sports like football or rugby, um, from that you will get teamwork, adaptability, communication, commitment, and organization. Um, all of those things massively important for medicine and dentistry, and you need to be able to link it back um to medicine and dentistry. On work experience, I think this is the thing that we get asked about really quite often. Um, work experience isn't essential for Newcastle, but it is encouraged because it just increases your um, your awareness of the course that you're going to. We would recommend checking local NHS Trust websites with your GP uh, and with your GP. Um, many offer shadow and work experiences. Look at related opportunities such as St John's Ambulance working as a healthcare assistant volunteering as a porter in a hospital, loads of different things. 
Um, make sure that you research the career and this can be from conversations if you can't shadow a doctor quite often they will be happy to just have a chat with you um, it can be from reading there's some really great books out there especially about being a junior doctor at the minute um, and not all work experience have to be healthcare related remember transferable skills in interview we get fabulous students who've had part-time jobs working in shops or working within fast food restaurants um, and they can pull fantastic examples of things that they've done there and um, that are going to help them in their career so any work experience is a benefit um it will also just make you a bit more confident within yourself too um from COVID-19 there are a lot of virtual work experiences out there which are healthcare related so I would recommend having a look at all these we will send these slides around um but do just have a look at those uh, in your own time in your conclusion, you just need to wrap it all up. Talk about future plans if you have any. Pardon me, focus on the course itself. What do you want to achieve at university? And what will you bring to the university? These are our top tips. I'm just going to um, pick a few out, but universities love to see well-rounded applicants um, that are interested in things, just not just medicine, outside of medicine too. Um, and they can just help you stand out. Make sure you check your spelling and grammar. Ask um, for honest feedback from people. Um, I know if I show my mom something, she, her first reaction is to go, that's brilliant. Um, but really, you want someone who's going to sit down and be a bit critical and get the red pen out. Um, so ask for honest feedback. I'm sure your teachers will help you with that as well. Um, don't exaggerate or lie. You will be caught out at some point. Don't rely on a spell checker. Use an appropriate email address, really important. This is a professional piece of writing. Write actively, not passively. So write, I done this, I done that. Um, and you sort out opportunities rather than just let them fall to you. Um, and don't Google best personal statement. By all means, have a look at personal statements that are out there, um, but don't plagiarize at all. They all get checked for plagiarism, so um, it's not worth doing. So after that, um, we would say you need you should be going to university open days, get a feel for the universities that you're applying to, talk to the staff and the students, and also get to know the city. Medicine and dentistry are long courses. You're going to spend five years minimum in this place. Um, so it's important that you're going to be somewhere that you'll be happy. Um, also thinking about geography, basically, will you be happy um, to move away from your family or would you prefer to stay close at home those are really valid things to think about when you're choosing a university um, you can email lecturers or admissions tutors with any questions you have if you can't find it on the internet um, and choose your fifth choice on UCAS, uh, UCAS which is usually biomedical sciences or pharmacy but there's a massive range of courses out there which we're going to talk about in a minute. And then you need to pay and submit your UCAS by October 15th or 14th. Just a little word on fifth choice courses. Medicine and dentistry are both very competitive courses at university. Um, there was 26,820 applicants to UK medical schools in 2023. There are only 7,100 places within the UK at the moment. So that's around a one in four chance of getting in. 5,000 people were repeat applicants of that 20, nearly 27,000. Um, and around that means around 14,000 do choose a different path. Um, they choose to study something completely different. Um, and it can be a really difficult course if you're not fully committed. You do need to explore your options, which will make you more aware of what's out there. It could just simply like make you think I definitely want to be a med med medic I definitely want to be a dentist but it could be that something else sparks your interest too and graduate entry is a really popular route for both medicine and dentistry for many students these are some of our um recommendations of courses to have a look at just to see if something interests you so we have biomedical sciences I've already seen a question in the Q&A about the um transfer from biomed to medicine at Newcastle we will touch on that at the end um pharmacy a really clinical degree um could be really interesting for a lot of you and dietetics as well the ones with the ticks are the ones we offer at Newcastle but there are other things out there and you can study something completely different and then still do um medicine or dentistry within the future 
you don't have to put a fifth choice either, but we would recommend having a look around at that. I'm aware that I'm taking a lot of Felicity's time here, so I'm going to do interviews very quickly. But there are two different types of interview style. So there are multiple mini interviews. We would normally describe these as um, sort of speed dating for interviews. So there'll be different stations set up. You'll go into one sort of booth and then time will, as time moves on, you just sort of carousel around them. So we would be doing, at Newcastle, we have seven different stations. So seven people would be getting interviewed at the same time and they'd just move on as time went on. So yeah, in Newcastle, seven candidates, seven stations, and you get seven minutes within each station and a two minute break in between the station. They, can, they may just be normal questions within the uh, multiple mini interview. The majority of the interview will be just regular questions, but they can throw different things at you. At Newcastle, we generally have a role play station. So we get an actor to come in um, and you have to sort of um, talk with them. It's a way that we can see your communication styles. You're not playing a character, you're playing yourself. We're just being able to see how you manage someone's communication style and it's actually something you do throughout medical school you um you have actors come in for your practical exams so it's a really good learning experience um medicine at newcastle is assessed in a multiple mini interview type um of format for medicine i have heard of university for dentistry sorry i have heard of universities that have got manual dexterity tests within their stations but at Newcastle, we do a traditional style interview for new, for um, dentistry. This year, it's online, typically conducted by two um, selectors and sometimes a layperson, so someone who's not a clinician. Um, approximately 20 minutes long. Um, it can be in person or online. As I say, this year, they're all online. Um, they may have read your personal statement before you go into the interview. So a really good way to prepare for interview is read through your personal statement. These are the seven areas. And it's really important to mention that no matter what style of interview you're doing, or no matter what format you're doing, the competencies um, will be the same. We're still looking for the same um, qualities within our students. To prepare read over universities admissions policy, they will have information about interviews and that. Have examples ready for a range of competencies, for example, teamwork and resilience. Practice, practice, practice. If there's a few of you from your school who are going to do um, medicine or dentistry, interview each other and it can really help you um, go in further on and conduct mock interviews if you can. Um, I'm going to pass over to Felicity now after talking quite a lot um and she's going to take you through our new admissions po po policy okay so hi everyone um yeah so we have a new admissions policy coming in from 2025 entry so if you're in year 12 now or equivalents of year 12 and you're going to be applying next year then this will apply to you the one thing to note is what i'm going to talk through only applies to our five-year program so if you are interested in our graduate medicine program and um, then the application process has not changed um, but we can answer that in any of the Q&A. Uh, one other thing to mention is there's quite a few questions come through, but we're going to answer those at the end. And we also have two of our medical students on the call who we're going to pop on as panellists and they'll be able to answer from the student point of view as well. The next slide, please, Ashley. So this is our new admissions process. So like I say, when you apply to university, we're still looking for exactly the same grades. We're still looking for three A's at A level or if you're coming through a supported entry route, slightly lower. But this is how we're going to select students for interview. So the first thing we'll do is we'll do an academic screen. And for students who are in year 12 and haven't yet uh, completed their A-levels, we will look at your predicted A-levels or equivalent. And um, we will make sure that you've achieved the grades that you need to enter university, to enter medicine. So that will be the first step. The second step will be a scoring of your most recent achieved academic results. And again, if you're in year 12, this will most likely be your GCSE scores. So we'll give a scoring of your top eight GCSEs, and then we'll also give you a scoring on your UCAT score. And I'll explain what these scores look like shortly. And that's how we're going to explain um, how we're going to select people for interview. We, oh, then our interviews haven't changed, as Ashley said, and we will still look at your personal statements and your references. And then the other thing to note is that offers will be made based on a combination of the academic screen and the interview scores. So it'll be 50-50 after the interview. 
Um, so the academic screen, you need three A-levels, um, excluding general studies, use of maths or world development, communication and culture and critical thinking. So we don't look at those A-levels, but we will look at any other A-levels. We don't have a requirement for science subjects. The caveat here is, though, a lot of medical schools do ask for science subjects. So please don't take that as no medical schools look at science. Make sure you look at the universities you're interested in and see what they're asking for um, at A-level. So here we are, the academic screen. Like I say, if you're in, in year 12 at the moment, then your most recent achieved grades will be your GCSEs. So what we'll look at is your best eight achieved grades at each at GCSE. Um, and if you've taken them, we will definitely look at your English language and literature, your maths and any of your science. And we will give each of these uh, GCSEs a score. So if you've achieved a grade nine, you'll get five points. If you've achieved a grade eight, you'll get four points, seven, three, six, one, and grade five, you won't get any points. And you will get a maximum of 40 points for this academic screen. If you have already sat your A-levels and you're taking a year out, then we'll look at your A-level scores um, and you will get a different score for an A-star, an A, a B, et cetera. What we'll then do next is look at your UCAT score. So you must have a valid UCAT score from the current test cycle. So if you're applying next October, you must sit your UCAT in the summer beforehand. Otherwise, it wouldn't be what we would call valid. We can't use a previous UCAT score. And you can only sit the UCAT once a year. So when you sit it next summer, the score that you get is your final score for that year. You can't resit it. We'll award up to a 60 points based on your total UCAT score. So here you can see if you achieve um, right at the very top, so the UCAT is actually out of 3,600, but it's very, very unlikely that anyone would ever achieve that score. But if you achieve anything over 3,200, which is exceptionally high, you would get 60 points. And then you can see it works down um, as the threshold lowers and you can see how many points you would get for the, the UCAT. Um, as I think Ashley mentioned, if you do get band four in your situational judgment test, then you'll not be considered for interview. So you must get band one to three in the situational judgment. Um, so the next step is, like I say, the interview. An interview will be based on a total combined score of the achieved academic results and the UCAS score. So you'll end up with a score out of 100. And then the top 1000 students based on that scoring will be selected for interview for the A100 programme. Um, so at the interview, um, a number of key competencies are assessed. You may get asked, um, we've mentioned these here all in the, the blue boxes on the right hand side. So we'll look at your integrity, we'll look at your communication skills, your teamwork, all the key things that we know are essential for future doctors. Um, you will have situational questions asked. So by that, we are asking for you to give us examples. So an example of a time you worked in a team, an example of a time you showed empathy for someone, um, an example of how you're organised. So that don't just say, I am organised, I show empathy. We want examples of when you've shown that. And that's what the selectors want to explore with you. We have a big pool of selectors who are all highly trained. So you'll meet them um, at the interviews. You'll meet a variation of doctors, university staff, the public, current students, um, and they will all interview you. And like I say, you'll meet seven people at your multiple mini interview. Um, the interview complements, complements the academic score and also the situational um, judgment band four score as well. Um, so after the interview, um, we will then check personal statements and references. So when we know who we want to make our offers to, the final step would be checking those personal statements and references to check there's no red flags. Um, so any, we will always read those um, straight after the interviews. And then the final step is obviously being made an offer. And offers are based on a combination of 50% academic screen. So that original where we gave you the scoring for your most recent achieved grades and your UCAT and 50% of the UCAT score. So it's a 50-50 ratio. And that's to make sure that people who maybe have a bad day at the interview or aren't particularly good at the interviews, aren't naturally an interview, um, excuse me, aren't naturally good at interviews, still have a chance to get into medical school because we know it's it's one hour of your life, the interview, and we want to make sure that you aren't disadvantaged. So we still will give a 50% based on your academic screen score. 
And then after that, students must attain their grades. So obviously you'll be made your offer based on attaining your grades if you don't already have them. And that would be three A's if you are um, coming on the standard pathway for home students. It would be A, B, B if you're a widening participation student. And it would be three B's at A level if you are coming through one of our widening participation schemes, such as partners or the Sutton Trust, which I'll talk about in more detail. Um, and then just a quick bit on dentistry for anyone who's interested in dentistry. Um, it's a bit more of a linear process. So first we will do the academic screen and we're looking for three A's again. But for dentistry, we are looking for chemistry and biology. You must have those two A levels and you must also have a pass in the practical element of those A levels. We'll then look at the UCAT and we'll invite students with the top UCAT scores for interview. We interview around 400 to 500 people, uh, 400 to 450 people for dentistry, and it's a panel style interview. And at the moment, we hold those online. So it'll be a Zoom call with two or three um, dentists, students, lay people. Again, you get a mixture of different selectors, and it will be more like a job interview. So we'll ask you questions, you'll answer them, and you'll be with the same selectors the whole way through. And then offers will then be based on the interview scored once all interview um, interviews have taken place. So I know a few people have asked about what Partners and Sutton Trust is, so I'll quickly run that and uh, run you through that. So Partners is um, our supported entry route at Newcastle University, and it's one of the biggest routes in the country. It's a nationally recognised programme. And over 6,000 students have entered the university via the Partners programme, and we've been running for 23 years now. So it's one of the most established routes um, across the country. And the Partners programme will help students receive a lower offer. Uh, for Newcastle University. So it's actually a three grade lower offer that you will receive if you're eligible for the Partners Programme. And as part of that, you have to um, successfully complete a free summer school the summer before you join university. And with Partners, you get extra help and support while you're applying for university and once you're at university as well. So like I mentioned, the lower upper offer is three grades lower than the typical example. So for medicine, if you are eligible for partners, it would be, um, oh, I think that's not quite right. So sorry, that was not quite right. So it would be um, AAA for a standard student, and then it would be BBB if you're coming through partners. The partners also has an academic summer school, um, which we also refer to as PASS. Um, and this is where you have to come and stay on campus with us for a few nights and then also do some online learning as well. So it's a really exciting way to come and meet um, other students on the partners programme, have a go at living in university accommodation. And you will then also follow an academic um, course while you're doing it. So if you're interested in dentistry, you'll spend some time with our dentistry academics and you'll do um, some academic sessions and um, get ready for university, basically. And it's completely free to attend. It includes all of your accommodation. So to get accepted onto partners, you must meet all the essential conditions, which I'll go through. You must then meet at least one of the 15 eligibility criteria. So there's lots of different criteria. And you must also make Newcastle University your firm choice. So to be considered, you must be a home student. So you're gonna pay UK fees and you live in the UK. You must meet all of the UCAS deadlines and you must also meet the predicted grades for your programme that you wish to apply for. The predicted grades must be no lower than one grade below the partner's entry requirements. So, for example, if it's three Bs at medis uh, for medicine, you must be predicted two Bs and a C um, as your minimum. Otherwise, you would not be accepted through partners. Um, so, oh yeah, I said a bit. And so the, here's the other eligibility criteria. So there's lots and I won't go through them all, but you must meet at least one of these. And this might be that your home postcode is um, in the UK and it's um, a low area of participation for higher education. You may have refugee status, you may be a young carer, and um, you may have been um, in care or experienced local authority care in the past. So there's lots of different options. And you can go on our website. It's very simple to remember. It's just ncl forward slash partners and to see if you meet any of the criteria on our website. Um, like I said, you must make Newcastle University your firm choice on the UCAS form. So if you put us as insurance, your partner's offer will no longer um, apply. So how to apply? So you submit your UCAS form as normal by the 16th of October. You must um, put in the UCAS extra um, information section a P to indicate you're going to apply through partners. You'll then submit a separate partners application form, which is available again on our website, and the partners team will contact you to confirm your eligibility. And once they do that, you'll go through the partners route, you'll get the lower offer and you will um, 
be um you will be get more information about the summer school which you must attend to um keep that lower offer as well and then just very quickly the Sutton Trust Pathways to Medicine so this is a much smaller program and this is um just for people based in the northeast and Cumbria um, it's very similar to, to partners. It's a supported entry route where you'll receive a lower offer, but you will get more dedicated medicine support. And that will be through skills sessions, admission support. You'll get an academic and a clinical mentor. You'll meet different industry experts. And again, you'll have an on-campus campus summer school in the summer between year 12 and year 13. Um, you will get lots of events on campus. You'll also have access to a fantastic platform called Sutton Trust Online, where you can get additional support. And I think one of the best things is that you will get one of our current students as your mentor who will support you through the two year application process to medicine. So again, the eligibility um, is, uh, is essential and you can check this out on the website. So if you just Google Pathways to Medicine Sutton Trust, but you must um, go to a non-private, non-fee paying school in the UK and be in year 12. You must be studying um, your A-levels and you must live within reasonable commuting distance to the Newcastle campus. We normally save somewhere between an hour and 90 minutes away. You must have certain GCSEs. So we're looking for five GCSEs at grade nine to six. And some essential criteria is that you are first generation in your family to attend university or that you've been eligible for free school meals or you live in a low progression neighborhood. Um, and there's a few other ones there. So we'll look, you have to meet a few more to be eligible for certain trust, but it differs slightly each year. So if you have a look at that and you think, oh, that might apply to me, um, then you can have a look on the website and see how you can apply. So I'm, I'm rushing through because I really want, I know we're going to have lots of questions and I really want us to get onto the questions um, for us to help answer you. But here are our contact details. So this is our email address here, studymedicalsciences at newcastle.ac.uk. We are more than happy for you to contact us at any point throughout your journey applying to medicine and dentistry or any of the, the faculty programmes as well. You can also keep in touch with us via Instagram, our Unibuddy platform. And um, also we have lots of interesting videos on our YouTube channel, which hopefully you've already accessed because um, we that's where we're posting all of our recordings. So we definitely have Joseph on the line. Joseph, are you able to turn your camera on? Perfect. Would you like to do a quick introduction to yourself? Um, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Great. Uh, my name is Joe. I am a medical student. I'm, be I'm between my fourth and my fifth year of medicine. So I'm almost finished, almost a doctor. Um, so any questions from the start to end of medical school, please feel free to ask. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So have some, so have some Yeah. Hi. So my name's Samia, and I'm second year medical student. So the preclinical years. Great. So I'm just gonna have a quick look at the Q and A. Um, me and Ash might answer some of the ones that are more admissions uh, focused, and then anything that's student focused, we'll we'll send it over to our students. Um. So we won't get through them all. I can tell you now, but we'll try our very best. Um, so first question is, um, where do I start? <laughs> um, do students, right, sorry, no, here, we, here we have a look, right. I'll, I'll start with one. Sorry, um, in Newcastle, are you expected to learn the majority of content through self-study and for lectures, consolidate information? Do they go through content again or do questions? So basically just um, how get, how do you guys learn the major majority of the content for your course for medicine? Um, so you do have lectures and things like that. And you, you're on, after they go through the content in the lecture based on like learning outcomes and things like that, you would go away like any like lesson in school that you'd review it yourself. But there is like things like seminars, which are much smaller group sessions where they might re go over like the content in the lectures. So applying it more in clinical practice, we call those sessions clinical reasoning. So you they'll have like scenarios of like our patient came in with these sort of symptoms and then you'd kind of go over what you might have learned in the lecture to applying it to that patient. And then in terms of questions, um, they are like um after each case, there's like questions um that are like exam style questions for you to have a look at and try practice those. So, yeah. Um, so that's for the first two years of medical school, the preclinical years. After that, you kind of, um, there's a lot less lectures, almost none. Um, you spend most of your time in the hospital, kind of like a nine to five job. You go in, see patients, do your learning that way, and then come home, consolidate on what you've learned on the day, and probably do some online learning as well for a couple more hours. 
Yeah, excellent. And um, we've also had a question, how do you appropriately prepare for interview? So how did you guys do it? Such as how much do you rehearse the questions and what's the dress code? Um, so in terms of preparation, I know what I did was initially, like, based on where I applied, looked at each individual university and how their interviews work, because um, although they might be similar in terms of having MMI, they might mention more specific details about what they kind of specifically assess and things like that. So definitely research individual universities and what they're looking for. And then in terms of like rehearsing or having like practiced or prepared answers. And for me, it was more the case of like having prepared like examples and things like that. So I know you've mentioned like having examples of work experience or just situations where I volunteered and things like that was just good to have. And having um, links to what personality traits or characteristics that I have with those, for example, teamwork and how that applies to me being in like a sports team or something like that, if that makes sense. So that was kind of the extent of my like preparation. I wouldn't go too in depth of kind of memorizing it will fill word like answer because it's quite obvious when you've kind of revised that and practiced that um yeah what Sammy said was absolutely right I feel like just a hammer in on do not remember a whole script because yes we can definitely tell when someone has just memorized the whole script and you definitely don't want that uh, I'd recommend for each kind of example you have creating a list of the bullet points um having a loose structure in your head but not solid Excellent. Have you got any Felicity uh, questions you want to ask Felicity? Um, so there have been quite a few questions about how long you should spend preparing for the UCAT, when you should sit the UCAT across the summer. Um, have you got any tips on what you guys did? Um, so I prepared four weeks for the UCAT and I was um, it was basically like the whole month of August because I think my UCAT was at the end of August. For me personally, I wanted to do it like after um year 12 had finished because I had mocks at the end of year 12 but also before year 13 it's um like started because obviously the application process would be quite well in its way and um, which for some people I know can be quite um sad because most of your revision time is spent on like most of your summer is spent revising for the UCAT but um that was the four weeks that I spent um I feel like it was good enough time maybe a bit longer but for me it worked that way um yeah I've heard of people spending more or less time I personally spent I think about two and a half weeks but I've also spent, I've also heard of people spending about two months. So it very much so varies. By the way, just on the previous interview question, the dress code um, for males wear suit and trousers and for females wear the equivalent. Yeah. Yeah, I would say for, for dress code as well, you want to make sure that you're comfortable. Um, you definitely want to get across sort of the best version of you. And if it's if you're wearing like a full suit and you, you feel really uncomfortable, that can come across. So we do get people just wearing sort of shirts. But it, I would typically say a smart dress code. Um, you sort of dress for the job you want. So think about what like a consultant in a hospital would wear. And that could be something that would be um, smart enough for you. We've also had um, questions for you guys. So what made you want to study at Newcastle? Um, but also what's your favourite, what's been your favourite thing about studying at Newcastle? Um, so what made me want to study at Newcastle? Um, I live in Newcastle. I've lived in Newcastle my whole life. So it was kind of a, for me, it was a given to apply to Newcastle and luckily I got in. So that was kind of my main thought. So, um, yeah, cause I live at home. I really like the city. And then it happened to be also, I like the teaching style of Newcastle with the case led learning and how we had the preclinical and then clinical years, which was quite nice. Um, and then what was the second question? Sorry. And um, what's been your favorite thing about the course so far? Um, for me, I really enjoyed like um, the, the clinical aspect, even though I haven't experienced it to the full extent um, yet. But what we've had so far in terms of having like clinical skill sessions to actually practice like examinations that you do, um, actual like practical exams. So even yesterday we got to take blood from our like actual like peers and things like that, which is quite scary and nerve wracking, but also really exciting to get started so early on. Um, I also like that we have like the early like clinical experience of having placements and going to like um, a hospital or a GP and seeing patients in real life, having a chat with them, maybe performing some examinations on them as well with like um, the GP, like supervising so that's also been really nice a lot of the clinical aspects for me personally okay on to me i think the the reason i chose newcastle is because um the people are nice that is genuinely the reason why i chose newcastle and it actually really came across during the interview um the interviewers didn't seem like they were trying to scare me or put me off and they were genuinely really nice out of all my interviews um 
than what I like the most about medicine so far. Uh, loads and loads of things. I, firstly, the cool stuff I get to do in, do in hospital. I've helped deliver a baby. I've sutured a patient up. I've put patients to sleep for surgery. Um, I've helped patients out of depression. You know, loads of cool stuff that just comes naturally with medicine. And then I also got to go to Vietnam for a month to, as part of my medical elective to study in a hospital over there. I'm going to Africa for three months soon to do some research as part of my intercalation. So I'm excited for that as well. Just loads of cool things. I don't think either of you went to Malaysia, did you? No. Felicity's actually been to Malaysia, uh, our campus there, so she'll be able to tell you how lovely I it have. is. I have. And it's I'm yet to go. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. It, it's absolutely wonderful. Um, it's the, the way they've built it, it actually um, echoes the Newcastle University campus. They've built arches, so you kind of feel like you're in Newcastle even though you're in Malaysia, but you get a lot nicer weather and, and better food as well. But it's an amazing opportunity. Um, yeah, some of my friends. Are, sorry. sorry, some of my friends are actually on um, Malaysia right now, and they seem to be really enjoying it and looking like I'm vicariously living through them, watching them like enjoying it so much and traveling, and also like studying medicine there as well. So it looks really fun. I um, I just had one thing I want to clear up because there's quite a few questions asking about the GCSE and A level scoring. So just to confirm that when we do the academic score, it will be your most recent achieved grades. So you can't choose whether it's your A level predicted or your A levels or your GCSEs. So if someone asks, you know, I did better in my GCSEs than my A levels. What it, whichever one you have sat most recently is the one that we will look at. Um, and your predicted grades, we're only checking those to make sure that you are a, a predicted the grades that you need to get into medical school. So if you're in year 12 and the most recent exams you've completed and got the certificates for are your GCSEs, then they're the grades that we will score. Um, another question about if we didn't have eight GCSEs, and that one I don't know the answer to. So I will pop an email address in our in the chat so everyone can see it, which will take you straight through to the medical school. And if you've got any personal circumstances, they're the best people to answer your questions. Um, I don't know if we have do you have any particularly questions that you want to um, answer we have been asked about the um, transfer meds uh, route from medicine from biomed to medicine um, I would say this is a really competitive route um, there's about seven spaces for medicine um, to be transferred over from biomed and there's probably over 100 of our first year biomeds do try to use that route so I would say not to bank on it basically you still need to have a UCAT score um you still need an interview um it is possible people do it but it I think just be aware that it is very um very competitive um, um uh, sorry just to just to add to that I have a friend of mine who did succeed in doing it and it took um loads and loads of effort but it just goes to show it's not you know impossible but equally I've discussed this route with fellow like other, with other lecturers and other admissions people and they kind of said that they don't recommend going that way if that's if you don't want to do biomed and you just want to do medicine they wouldn't go for biomed than medicine that way yeah and it is it is very competitive just with the scores that you have to have so you have to have um over 75 percent of your first year degree grades and you can't be lower than 70 percent in any module i believe correct as if I'm wrong Felicity but it is very competitive and it's um yeah so I would wouldn't recommend that as I actually studied biomed I studied pharmacology at university and um at Newcastle and a lot of my friends then went on to graduate entry medicine because they had sort of like the scientific knowledge but really wanted the clinical exposure as well so graduate entry is really popular for a lot of students um and it's something that you can um sort of come back to if if you decide that it is for you. Okay. Any other questions you want to um answer particularly Felicity? Um there's an interesting day here. So what is it what's the typical day look like for you guys while you're studying at Newcastle? That'll be quite different, I'm sure. Um so for me it's pretty much um you're here Monday to Friday but in terms of like how intense it is um it can vary so for say for me today I only had like one seminar whereas on Monday I think I had four lectures so it can vary between that and like that just kind of depends on the day but 
that's how for me um because of kind of that kind of randomness with your schedule I try to make my own timetable in terms of that so if I have got a lecture at nine or whatever I'll stay in and then I try to stay in to say like four or five and have that kind of nine to five structure or some sort of structure there so even if I don't have a lecture or seminar I'm still in the library or somewhere doing work nice and for me in, in third year the, the later structures can get quite messy but in third year you're in hospital nine to five almost every day um that's what, what you get and then you come home do more revision go to bed and repeat that uh in fourth year i spent two and a half days a week in the hospital two and a half days a week in the library um doing self-directed study uh, and then in fifth year it goes back to the structure of year three where you're in hospital or I, um, I saw one interesting question, which was around uh, the interviews and how you can demonstrate that you're compatible for the Newcastle programme. So do you have any tips on that, the kind of student that would be compatible for our programme? Um, so for me, I kind of mentioned how I know that it's a case-led approach. And for me, that was quite good because in terms of how they focus on each system at a time. So for example, like um, Ashley was saying, if you're looking at like the di digestive system or anything to do with like gast gastroenterology, I like the idea of having that all in one. So learning about everything to do with how the um, digestive system normally works and then also what can normally go wrong and then how you'd manage it and treat it. And it just worked quite logically in my um, in my head. So I kind of enjoyed that. And then also having the opportunity to kind of have split between like learning, um, learning independently, but also um, as a group and things like that. So having that kind of balance there as well. Um, yeah, I don't think I have much to add really. That's, that's perfect. <laughs> Brilliant. Just trying to ask, sorry, we're not going to get through all the questions. I do apologise. Um, a few questions about how you start preparing for the UCAT. Like, how did you start um, when it was first be feeling quite daunting for you? Um, initially, I'd definitely say just kind of exposure to actually what the UCAT is. So I think I actually give quite a good introduction into the four um, sections of it and like what they involve. For me, it was just kind of getting to know them a bit. But I tried like a few practice questions just to see like I can understand like how the questions work and things like that. So definitely give yourself some time just to understand what's how it works. And then going into like proper revision of kind of getting used to doing the practice questions, getting them right, but also doing them at a very like fast pace speed as well. And um, that definitely comes with time and practice as well. Um, yeah, so for me, I remember I did loads of Googling on what actually is the UCAT and what does it entail, kind of getting more general knowledge on the topic before diving into the practice questions. Uh, and then, yeah, once I started the practice questions, it's really the timing that matters. Make sure every time you practice them, you're timing yourself, because to me, that was the hardest aspect of the UCAT. And uh, my friends have said the same thing. Um, I've also seen one question here, which is how easy did you find it to adapt? Now, I know, um, I think, Joe, you were a partner student and Sammy, I, I think you were a Sutton Trust Pathways to Medicine student. So how did you find the transition from A-level to um, medical student? Or was it what you expected? Um, so for me, I guess it was what you expect because you expect to do like university, but it was a lot of adapting. Yeah. So I think it's more just, um, especially in fit, I would definitely give like, um, it was more adapting to university life than it is adjusting to medicine. So just adjusting to having lectures and seminars and things like that. And then getting used to the style of how you have a lecture and things like that. And you go over it in a similar way of um, um, lessons at school, but it's just not as, um, not as um, self, like you're not as spoon fed as much as you would have been when you were um, in like high school and things like that. So definitely just getting used to that. Also balance, balancing like life with um, university. So kind of like I say, having some sort of nine to five structure or any structure that kind of works for you. So then you know that you can separate your school life and your um, life as well, not social life and things like that. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think for me, the challenge in adapting definitely came from, I don't know, living by myself cooking and you know all this stuff meeting friends all the time constantly meeting new people and being overwhelmed uh, of trying to keep up with everyone um but i think that's the natural path of year one of any un university degree and you'll look back and have a lot of fun 
There was just one extra thing I wanted to say, Ash, and um, that's just come to my mind is when we would what we've been talking about today is all eligible for um, our home students. So if you're eligible to pay UK fees. So if we've got any students on the call who are um, international students or maybe in the UK, but going to be classed as international students, there is a slightly different process. So what I'll ask you to do is to drop the um, admissions email um, and they'll be able to explain the process for you for international students, just not to cause any confusion. Um, and actually, someone's asked about when your UCAT workshops will start as well. Um, I haven't quite set the date yet, but I'll probably start them around April time. Um, so I usually do this talk again, so an overview of applying to medicine and dentistry. Um, so if you want a refresher, feel free to do that. Um, then I'll do one on personal statements and then I'll do one on UCAT. So leading up to them opening um, for account registration in May and then probably into sort of June, July time. Um, I'll send, or I'll get Fiona to send a follow-up email with um, our STEM newsletter. They'll all be, I send out a monthly newsletter and it'll all be advertised within that. Um, but also keep an eye on our sort of um, Instagram pages and YouTube and we might put something on the socials too. But they'll be coming up uh, within the new year. Great. Um, well, I think we're going to finish there. Sorry we've overrun a little bit, but there was lots of questions we didn't want to, and I'm sorry we haven't managed to answer them all. Um, so a massive thank you to our students for joining us tonight. Really appreciate your input as well. Anything else, Ashley? No, thank you very much. Good luck with all your applications. Yeah, and thank you for joining all of our sessions. We really appreciate you supporting the, the Mini Medical School. It's been a great success again, so thank you.